The next talk is Sustainable Digital Intervention in Tribal and Remote Areas of Andhra Pradesh Using Freedom Box by Shripat Roy and team. Shripat is a General Secretary of Swecha AP based out of Andhra Pradesh and working as an Assistant Professor at KL University, Andhra Pradesh. Shripat, it's all yours. Thank you. So, we are from Swecha IP, which is a not-for-profit working on uh, free software for technology for society. And uh, we aim towards bridging the digital divide. So, today we are here to tell our story, how we went to certain areas in tribal area of Andhra Pradesh and how we try to provide some digital services there. So, like we are, we are here in the western guards of India, so where you are seeing Anamudi Peak, and uh, we are very close by to the mountain ranges. Where I come from is from the eastern guards of the country. There, there are very beautiful places and uh, good hill stations and all. We had a journey over there. We met a lot of people. There are a lot of indigenous cultures. There is a lot of uh, natural resources which, which are self-sustainable. But uh, when, we, when we entered, they, we encountered there are hundreds of villages there where there is no cellular connectivity at all. So there are hundreds and hundreds of villages, there is no mobile connectivity or not even internet connectivity. So they are blind since many years. In the, in the digital age, so today we are connected through internet, our entire lives are depending on internet and the knowledge systems which are available on internet. There, at the same time, there are many people who are away from this access not only cellular connectivity, even to make a phone call, they had to travel around 20 kilometers. So just imagine there is a health emergency where they have to call a hospital or someone close by or someone, uh, a relative or someone. They had to travel 20 kilometers to 30 kilometers just to make a phone call. And there are a lot of people who die in this process. And that is, that is how the connectivity became a bigger issue. And uh, not just in the emergency, there, are, there is not even a very good power supply. Half of the day they are completely backed out of, or blacked out of uh, it, uh, the power supply. And uh, coming to the education, there are schools, but the la there is a huge lack of no uh, digital resources and uh, many, many such resources. So these, these are the marginalized sections which are still uh, present uh, in, the, in the today's era. But uh, they, are, they are left out. So not, no, no cellular uh, provider or even the government is ready to provide solutions for them. So being the infrastructure which is very costly and they choose to leave them marginalized. Thus improving the huge digital gaps. So where the people in the cities and from the towns uh, gaining the access and getting better opportunities where these people are still being left out. The highest amount of education that we saw in these places was uh, till the high school. So post high school, there are many people over there who are just first generation kids who are just studying now. So their parents didn't go to school or their grandparents. So that is a situation where we as free activists, uh, free software activists, we thought to provide certain solution there. So we interacted with a lot of people, we did a lot of surveys, uh, we found out that there are a lot of schools, a lot of school kids and uh, youth where who are lacking the who are lacking the knowledge access. So we thought of giving the digital access to those villages and also provide certain uh, knowledge systems for them. So we gathered a lot of uh, books, uh, open access uh, videos uh, related to schools, uh, for, uh, for engineering students, for degree students. Uh, we gathered a lot of information, we prepared an archive and then we looked into a lot of tools where which can provide the services or the solutions for these people. And that is where we, Freedom Box came to our rescue. So Freedom Box, which is a Debian pure blend, uh, has provided almost 99% of the solution that we are looking for. It comes up with all the services that can enable a village or transform a system to make it go digital. So Freedom Box, uh, the funny thing is the Freedom Box is designed and developed as a private home server, but we hacked it or we modified it to make it a community server for a whole village. So the next story comes up, 
how we use this content and the data that we gathered and archived and make it uh, run as services for the village. So we used a lot of services from Freedom Box that you can see uh, the books, uh, the books and the, uh, the content are, uh, you, uh, we served using Calibre, we, we hosted there, we used uh, Sync Thing to share the files, we used basic file, file sharing, FTP file sharing. Uh, the most interesting thing is the video lectures and the, uh, for the school kids, our main aim is for the school kids and the, uh, and the youth. So where we gathered a lot of information related to education, where we pr streamed it using mini DLNA and also we used uh, Jellyfin, Jellyfin server to uh, provide the streaming solutions and offline, uh, we used Kivix, Kivix to serve the Wikipedia uh, offline archives. And we use PageKite to manage the server from our place. And uh, Mumble, Mumble is one interesting story where uh, we used it to broadcast as a village radio. So where someone in the village used to broadcast whatever they want to tell. And whenever they want to have a, uh, have a podcast or something, a, a simple broadcast every week, every weekend, they use Mumble as a service. And lastly, internet is a service. So. The, if you imagine the internet connectivity there is 1 Mbps. The, uh, after one day, they are going to get only 1 Mbps for the whole month. And uh, the village of 300, 400 people have to stay on this 1 Mbps. So internet is not a solution for them. So government have to lay the infrastructure until they get connected. So till then they can't be blacked out of the information. Where That is where we archived all these and make uh, use Freedom Box to serve this content offline to everyone. And uh, hardware, uh, setting up the Freedom Box uh, as a server is done. Now we have to broadcast to the whole village. So it's a tribal area which is full of uh, trees, hills and a uh, uh, lot of foam spread across the village. So streaming it to the entire village uh, is a huge challenge for us. So setting a few antennas in a room and broadcasting to this room uh, in, on an inside uh, uh, access point would have been easier. But uh, with the trees and the, we have mapped the whole village, we have figured out where the trees are, where the uh, buildings are, and made sure uh, how the antennas work. We tried, it, uh, we tried with a lot of antennas, and uh, we created a village map, and then we started setting up the antenna network. So we used a lot of uh, outdoor access points, uh, repeaters, to make sure the entire village gets connected. So the next few photos will show you how uh, we configured uh, Freedom Box uh, and uh, made the network available across. Can you? So our volunteers of uh, Sweja who were who are doing graduation, uh, B.T. graduation, were there in setting up this Freedom Box. So, yeah. So not only setting up the services, uh, the next major step is about making them use it. So just leaving them uh, connected to the services doesn't, uh, doesn't let them or continue using them. So we, we run few sessions, we interacted with the villagers, we enabled the youth of the village to self-sustain it, to take it forward. And uh, maybe that is where we created few manuals, a uh, few documentation for them to uh, spread across. And uh, this, is, this, is a, this is the most important part. As free software uh, activists, we tried to do something. We, built a sol uh, we developed a solution, uh, tinkering or using a lot of free software and hardware solution. But the, the major problem is the continuation of this. So the community have to take up. So it is not uh, the community have to take up. And uh, you don't believe the villagers have own this, they have, uh, they have helped uh, setting up this entire network uh, and not just helping up setting the own network, few people owned it and uh, they were, our future idea is to have every village having their own freedom box, managing their own services because every village has certain amount of uh, demographics of students or women or farmers, they need their own localized content. So they will be gathering their content, they will be setting up their own servers, and they will be maintaining the, uh, the content streams for them. And that is how we are going to maintain the street, uh, decentralization and collaboration. And uh, not only that, listening uh, to this setup, few villages across, 
they spread the uh, they spread the word lot of villages lot of requests came in and asking us to uh, set up the same uh, uh, community network across there uh, there we have done uh, as, uh, we have gone further and started setting up in those villages as well and they didn't stop there uh, because we are some activists or some organizations going there and setting up uh, will not be sustainable for every village possible so they uh, they came forward they went to the government they filed an application uh, setting up this uh, giving this model as an example asking them to set up freedom box or all this community network or knowledge centers for them uh, in their local places and uh, yes as an next step uh, they moved forward in setting up a community digital library so the the government uh, welcomed the idea and now they are ready to set up a community digital library in a school uh, we chose a school to set up this where we are going to set a few computers there uh, for a people uh, for the students basically to get in touch get in touch with uh, these knowledge resources and the village uh, to get access with this uh, services so this this entire thing was possible with the free software community uh, and the freedom box team uh, freedom box developers uh, majorly uh, sunil mohan uh, who was with us uh, in setting up this freedom box we have joseph uh, in the crowd and there are a lot of uh, uh, freedom box developers who who helped us transform this idea to make it work for a for a uh, for a rural space and uh, the next idea is about contributing to equitable tech so the problem here is uh, there are a lot of services and applications that are available but it is not so easy for a uh, for a person from a tribal agency area to start quickly using them because of the lack of uh, knowledge they have in using the digital services so building equitable tech where uh, people can easily understand how to uh, work on these applications how to stream their content uh, and localizing the uh, content so is the next challenge for us and that is where we are looking for collaborations from uh, different free software communities where they can help us uh, uh, give more uh, ideas of using better tools better technology or the better uh, hardware better antennas uh, the better infrastructure so that every every uh, last mile so we call it the last mile connectivity the last mile reaches uh, the access reaches to the last mile and yes volunteer with us and uh, maybe if you can fund us in setting up this community networks so lastly with freedom box and technology we believe that we can bring change to the lives of the people so freedom box yes freedom box and free software can bring lot of change to the lives of the people and we want everyone to be part of this change thank you so any questions hello i am varun i have a few questions yeah so one is regarding of funding get it close up can you hear me yeah yeah okay yeah one one question is regarding funding so where did you get funding from like like in my experience generally donors like they give money but they also demand like a certain mm, like they want to know where their money is going and all like they want documentation about how it is being used and all so how did you manage that yeah so basically we are an organization which uh, uh, which advocate free software uh, we run lot of workshops we uh, we transfer technology and there we raise lot of funds and through those funds we are uh, we are going to use them in the rural spaces and yes uh, we we should be transparent about how we use the funds okay thank you so my other question is how did you get this decentralization process done this decentralization process like i suppose that must have been a very important step because like otherwise um, when somebody is managing it then then it works well but to move it on to the locals yeah so how how did you do that step 
Yeah, it, it's uh, like you said, it's quite a challenge because uh, lo training the locals to enable them to make their services run for us is not an easy job. And uh, till date, we didn't even achieve it. So we are in hand in hand with them to make it work. So we are not the one who are going to control the whole thing, but uh, we are going to enable the villagers to run their own uh, digital set setup. Uh, uh, my question is, uh, you were asked about this part about uh, they not, being able, not being able to uh, do fault calls in emergency cases. Um, maybe I missed it, but uh, you didn't talk about twice of IP or something like that. So how did you man give them the ability to do fault calls? To Oh, I didn't get the question, sorry. Uh, you, you said uh, that uh, they needed to go 20 kilometers or so to yeah. make a phone yes. call. Um, did you fix that? Uh, did you give, this, give them voice over IP or something? Or um, how d did you manage them? Yeah. So what we did was uh, we, we enabled the internet to be uh, spread across the whole village. And uh, yes, they are using WhatsApp to make their calls now. So we didn't fix it using a matrix server or something, but they are connected through WhatsApp. They are forming groups across villages and they are making calls over it. Yeah. My question is, uh, can there be a mechanism of, uh, a mechanism like two freedom boxes interacting with each other? I mean, uh, you set up freedom boxes uh, in different villages and you have a common knowledge base so that you can, uh, from your base, broadcast you know, offline wikis and uh, these students in different communities can, uh, each having different freedom boxes can share, uh, can access that single source of information. It's up to the freedom box maintainer how they, wa how they want to connect with others. So there is a possibility if they are connected to a, in a common network, there is always a possibility to share the uh, knowledge repository. So I don't think knowledge repository can't be need to be restricted. Uh, if someone wants to gather the knowledge from some other village, it is always open for them. Uh, hello, uh, this is not a question, but to evangelize this one tool that I love, it's called as Colibri. So it also has the same thing like reducing the knowledge gap. Something that you know I could help with. Yeah, true. So Colibri comes up with a lot of uh, knowledge resources from our country. Oh, there's a question on IRC. Uh, it is, uh, what could be the free software community do to be more useful for such places? Is the B easier to use, you already mentioned in the main thing, or is there anything more? Uh, they gave an example example around being able to handle cheap hardware, limited, unreliable power, internet, etc. Yeah. So, like I said, the corporates and, uh, uh, and the government didn't choose to work for the marginalized. But the free software is something that always works for the people. So, building tech uh, is possible when free software uh, community can come around and gather. That is where we put a request like uh, to build uh, more uh, equitable tech so that or ease of use technology so that the people can just uh, quickly install. Uh, that, is where, that is why we choose Freedom Box as a, uh, as a service because these particular packages can be installed on any domain system and run. But uh, Freedom Box comes up with a plinth interface where uh, people can just install uh, using a simple UI. So maybe developing such applications or making uh, network equipment much cheaper, uh, antennas much cheaper, and maybe uh, our next challenge is about handling the power. So these kind of systems, uh, if they come down, uh, if the costs come down, maybe it would help serve a lot of people. Um, totally. How many villages did you cover, sir, fully? Uh, fully? How many people benefited? Uh, how many people? This is a story of a village called Lodoti in, uh, uh, in, in Andhra Pradesh. The similar setup we have uh, done in uh, uh, Surapagodam. There are a couple of villages that we have done in Telangana as well. So we have a sister organization which that is in Telangana. 
and uh, we, the whole the digital services apart from the digital services we provide access to internet in around seven eight villages so we didn't set up a freedom or the data server it but uh, first we started with a couple of antennas to provide internet to the whole village so the next step is about providing the uh, the knowledge resources we are about time so thanks Shripad for the talk and that's it yeah. thank you very much